No curriculum? No problem. Homeschooling Preschool does not have to be complicated. Just pick a theme for each week and plan some activities around it. In this video, you will get ideas for activities and resources that I found for one of my favorite June themes, oceans. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley, and this week I'll be sharing what preschool activities and resources I have for an ocean-themed week of learning. Now, I do have other themes planned like volcanoes and desert and chicka chicka boom boom, but for this video, I'm just gonna be focusing on one of the themes I'm most excited about, and that's oceans. No, I do not use a set curriculum. These are ideas that I either came up with myself or I found on Pinterest and Instagram. Now here's to say there is nothing wrong with using curriculum. I plan on finding the best curriculum for my family in the future. But for now, I'm just enjoying the fun and creativity in homeschooling preschool. So let's dive in. For sensory learning, I put together an easy water sensory bin. Just get a large storage bin or bowl, fill it with water, and put in any aquatic animal toys you have. If you want to take it a step further, go ahead and add blue food coloring. With this activity, you can recreate scenes from any ocean-themed books or movies, you can reinforce facts about aquatic animals, but most importantly, you can let them use their imaginations while they create their own scenarios. For our science project, we made our own ocean in a bottle. You'll need a clear bottle or jar filled one third of the way with water, oil, and blue food coloring. Add some food coloring to the water and mix well. Then fill the rest of the bottle with oil. Put the lid on tightly. Go ahead and hot glue it if you're worried about making a mess. And let your child move the bottle and create beautiful waves. This is a perfect opportunity to explain why oil and water separate. This week, I planned three different crafts. The first being this pom-pom painted sea turtle. For this craft, you'll need paint, pom-poms or a foam dauber, construction paper cut into four legs, a head, a tail, and a shell. You're going to work with your little one and glue the turtle together. When it's all dry, your little one will love decorating the shell with paint. This activity allows your child to get creative. This next Cheerio clad starfish craft will help your little one work on gluing practice and fine motor skills. You'll need a handful of Cheerios and construction paper cut into a starfish. This one is straightforward. Help your child practice gluing and placing the Cheerios on the glue dots. Next up, this fish puppet is a craft your little one can play with after. You'll need thick construction paper cut into a shape of a fish body, feathers, stickers, a craft eyeball, and a popsicle stick. Your little one is gonna glue the eyeball on, glue or tape the feathers on the back and make fins, and decorate the body. Now, I'm a huge proponent of adapting crafts to use what I already have on hand. So decorate the fish however you want. You can use glitter, sequins, crayons, or paint. There's no limit to the creativity. Then glue or tape the popsicle stick at the bottom. Now your child has his or her very own fish puppet. If you're getting value out of this video, please hit that like button and let me know down in the comments if you like themed weeks, and if so, what's your favorite one? I rarely theme number and math activities, but decided to make this jellyfish for counting practice. You'll need construction paper cut into a half circle, five to eight long strips of paper, and dot stickers, or any other stickers you have. After putting your jellyfish together with glue or tape, draw a cute little face and number off its legs. Then ask your child to match a certain amount of stickers to each number. This word hunt is one of my daughter's favorite reading practices and you can match it to any theme. Just pick a word you want them to find and write it a few times on paper and add a few extra words to create a challenge. Here I ask my daughter to circle every fish word. You can also make this a letter find for little ones learning to recognize letters. When I plan a theme for a week, I usually place a hold on a few books at the library in advance. There were a lot of ocean themed books available, but a few really stood out to me. 
The first one is The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Deason. This is a really fun read about a grimacing fish who believes he has no control over his glum attitude. There's plenty of repetition in rhyming, which is important for phonological awareness. The next book is Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carle. This is about a daddy seahorse carrying his unhatched babies in his belly as he travels through the ocean and encounters other daddy sea animals. I thought it was neat how it had these clear plastic interactive pages. Next up is The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. It gives a clear message about sharing and friendship and is beautifully illustrated. Last is a National Geographic kid book called Swim Fish, Explore the Coral Reef by Susan Newman. Whenever I do a science-y theme like ocean, I like to add a book or two with realistic images. I love how short and simple this one is for my preschooler. We love watching movies around here, so I always try to be conscious to theme her movies to reinforce anything she's learned. For this week, I hopped onto Disney Plus and showed her Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, two well-known and loved movies that my daughter can honestly watch over and over again. Then if you have Netflix, there's a documentary called Disney Nature Ocean. Documentaries don't hold my daughter's attention for too long, but it may be great for older kids. I found a great app called Marco Polo Ocean. It's an interactive game that lets kids explore sea life. They can feed fish, build submarines, and do puzzles that teach them ocean vocabulary. The best part is that it's completely free. There's not even ads or in-app purchases. I hope this video got you excited to plan a fun ocean-themed week of learning for your toddler or preschooler. If you would like to see more preschool-themed videos in the future, please hit that like button. And if you're interested on tips and encouraging a love of learning in your toddler or preschooler, please subscribe. I post a video every Tuesday and I have a lot of great content coming up. Thanks for watching.